there, I have a garden update for you today. I think I started by talking, referring to these episodes as days, when in actuality they're weeks, so I should probably call them weeks. So with that in mind, we'll call this week six. <laughs> and um, I have quite a transformation for you this week. We accomplished a ton in the garden. We had some really gorgeous days, scattered with some not so great days weather-wise. Typical spring weather. Um, I got quite a few things planted this this week which was my big my big um, hope and I have a funny story. <laughs> so I when we moved in here into this house um, I was pregnant. I was pregnant with my son and uh, just that first summer that we lived here, um, I had just had him. So I had him in May. So I did not plant anything, um, at least that I can remember that first summer. I don't really remember anything, actually, from that first summer. <laughs> I'm not sleeping. Um, but, uh, so, so we didn't plant anything. So I didn't, um, I didn't know uh, when I wasn't paying attention to um, last frost and uh, when when would be a good time to start planting stuff. So the following year, I did plant some things and I planted them too early. We got a big storm, a big freeze that came through, and I lost most of my plants and had to replant. And um, you know, it's just all a learning experience. So that brings me to last summer, and last summer um, I planted too late. So I. Um, I had great hopes of having a more successful garden, but what ended up happening was um, I didn't really end up getting too much from it uh, because I just planted too late and um, there just wasn't enough time for the plants to fully mature and, um, and I didn't get much, much produce. Um, I did, however, have great success with my dye plants. Um, I tried indigo and I, I, I just don't think that there's going to be enough time until I have a greenhouse to grow indigo myself, but, um, but some of my other dye plants did really, really well. Um, so at least, at least I had that going for me. So um, that brings me to this year. I'm still a little up in the air as to when to start planting things in the ground. Um, I'm counting, I'm, I'm ba basically counting on last frost for my area to be um, May 31st, which is um, sort of the general rule around here in Central Oregon, depending on where you're at exactly. Um, but we do have, you know, a lot of microclimates and where I'm at is typically a little bit warmer than other places in Central Oregon. Um, but again, it just, it just depends. So that said, <laughs> I really count on um, my neighbors who grow things to um, kind of clue me in on, on what's happening. And I have a neighbor who plants sunflowers every year. And I've tried growing sunflowers and they flopped because I planted them too late. And so uh, I've been walking by his house, keeping an eye on it, wondering, okay, he can't be planting yet. It's too early, it's too early, it's too early. So I, <laughs> I go by it, um, it must have been uh, just after I filmed the last episode, so just about a week ago. And <laughs> no joke, he has things growing in his yard that are probably four or five inches tall. I was like, oh shoot, okay, I have to get those sunflowers in the ground. So I immediately came home and I, I'm pretty sure it was last Saturday. I planted sunflowers and um, was feeling really good about, my <laughs> good about myself because I'm thinking, yes. Well, in the back of my mind thinking, man, it seems early because um, we still have a lot of potential frosty nights. So, but I, I did it because he did it and I, he always has beautiful sunflowers. So um, fast forward to yesterday or the day before, yesterday or the day before, um, I'm losing track of the days <laughs> very easily now. And I realized as I walked by his house that he has not planted his whole um, fence line with sunflowers as he does typically every year. But he has two, just two small plants and now they're about, you know, five, six inches tall. And they're in cages. <laughs> so I think 
I don't think he's planted his sunflowers yet. I think he's planted some beans or peas or some other cold weather, cold weather crop. And now I'm really sad because I have a feeling that my sunflower, that it was in fact too early for my sunflowers. Nonetheless, we'll see what happens. I'll let them, I'll let them go and, and see if, if maybe I can protect them on those frosty days enough to keep them alive. So that's that funny story. Um, I also planted some carrots and um, some peas and beans and inside I've started more seeds. I started my um, Roma tomatoes which I hadn't, um, I didn't have any of those seeds yet when I started my other tomatoes but I was able to find some Roma seeds and I also started some eggplant and lettuce inside. And I'm gonna move those lettuce out here pretty quick because um, I think I think that'll be fine for them. So uh, that is my big update, and I will um, I'll I'll give you a look around around the garden now. All right. Here's my wildflower bed that I planted a couple of weeks ago. Um, I made the rookie mistake of not properly <laughs> preparing the bed and I have all sorts of grass coming through. But I do have some wildflowers popping up finally. It's been very difficult to keep the seeds moist for germination because um, it's just so dry here. So dry. And it's been so sunny as well. So even watering them twice a day doesn't seem to be quite enough. This is going to be primarily a vegetable bed. I did plant some carrots right in this corner here. Nothing has popped up yet. Again, it's sort of the same problem I'm having, being able to keep them wet for germination. Um, because I can't keep my hose plugged in at night, um, it's just kind of that added extra step that seems to be difficult. There have been a couple of nights where I've been in bed and thought, oh no, I forgot to turn off the water and unhook the hose. So my husband has actually <laughs> gotten out of bed and done it um, at least once for me. I think the other time I checked from the window and it, I had already done, <laughs> had already unhooked it. But um, this will be <clears throat> another vegetable bed. Um, the I will have dye plants scattered in throughout my vegetable beds just to create happier, healthier habitats <clears throat> for everything. Um, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this big bed here is going to be, um, my plan right now is that it will be completely dye plants. So um, that's gonna be really fun and beautiful. Um, there are my new pavers for standing at my potty bench. And look at all the beautiful biomass walkways. They're all different colors because we've been spreading them out at different times. They're kind of different levels of wetness. <laughs> um, you saw my new beds last week. Hey, look at this. My strawberry plants, you can see them through the weeds. I spent some time weeding this whole bed and um, giving those strawberries an occasional splash of water. I do want to top this bed off with more soil because it's quite low. And I forgot to mention last week that my husband did take out the cinder block border that was here surrounding this bed when we moved in and uh, made a nice wood frame for it. Um, it looks really nice. Um, there's my water source right over there in the corner. <clears throat> and two more beds. This one you can see we haven't filled with dirt yet. We're running really low on, on dirt so I think we're probably going to have to get some more. This is where my raspberries will go. And all along here will be, oh, you can see my shadow. All along here will be my um, sunflowers. And they will be a variety of sunflowers for dying with, as well as just um, pretty, those big giant sunflowers as well. I planted um, my beans here and my peas here. And the, the problem that 
I'm <laughs> guessing I may end up having is that I um, intended for this fence to be the support for my beans to climb on and my peas to climb up. But in hindsight, I may have a battle <clears throat> with the local wildlife that roams through our yard. I'm afraid that once they start sprouting that the deer are gonna just uh, yank yank them right out from the other side of the fence. I don't know, we'll see. And there's the beautiful bench that my husband made. Isn't that beautiful? I'm super excited about it. Super excited. Alright, that's what I got for you today. Bye!